many of us have had jobs that we found unpleasant. In fact, it often seems as if this is endemic to people our age. We're easily taken advantage of in many cases. Many times, since we don't have experience, we have to do the most unpleasant tasks. Andrew Bouchard certainly has had his share of jobs that he didn't like. First job he got was delivering a newspaper. The reason that this job sucked was because every day at the crack of dawn, Andrew would have to wake up, deliver the papers, regardless of the weather. Snow, rain, minus 60 below, still had to deliver the papers. After this, Andrew worked at McDonald's. McDonald's did not stimulate the workers. It wasn't creative enough because it was geared towards profit. It was a lot of drudgery work. The next job Andrew got was working for his father at Charlie's Bakery. This was very good because the father ran the business. It still was a job. Andrew worked one summer at Wendy's. The problem with Wendy's, the bosses were constantly yelling. One of the bosses had Andrew do something which was questionable. Every day he was working, he had to clock out at 11, but he still had to work until the lobby was clean. It was very difficult to finish the lobby by 11. Almost never could one do it at that time. As Father pointed out, that brought the salary dangerously close to minimum wage. One summer, Andrew worked for a temp agency three weeks at a nursing home. This nursing home was at a faster pace than many corporate businesses. It was an assembly line where one had to work almost every second, very little time for breathing. Andrew worked at Kmart another summer. This was the worst job of them all. This job clearly was most orientated towards getting the maximum profit without concern for the individual worker. Only one boss regularly complimented people. Andrew thought he would try to make a difference working a job that wasn't a corporate job. Andrew got a job at a summer camp. The summer camp had potential. It was really cool to work with kids. It went wrong. Andrew was the editor of the newspaper. Deadlines are always stressful. Especially when the boss has unrealistic expectations, the managing editor is often difficult to track down to approve the final copy. It's also difficult when the machinery is constantly malfunctioning. It's difficult to edit a newspaper when you're supposed to also discipline kids when you're supposed to teach the kids how to write a newspaper, write a newspaper at the same time. The kids were very wealthy kids, which meant they were difficult to deal with. Andrew ended up getting fired from this job. It was a very difficult experience. Afterwards, there was so much emotion because the heart was put into this job trying to reach these kids that Andrew cried a long time. It was hard for this one guy to take Andrew home who worked there longer than the boss was alive. The boss was a rich kid who had everything his whole entire life. Then Andrew worked newspaper delivery again. It's a drag carrying the newspapers on a bike. There's a reason why all these jobs tend to be unpleasant. It is because there's an economic system that these jobs are a part of. This economic system is dangerous. Capitalism has caused us much misfortune and much sadness. It's important for us to realize this because when we do, 
we can hope to cultivate a better way. One of the biggest problems of capitalism is its emphasis on competition. Many assume competition is okay because it brings out the best in us, they say. In some aspects, this is true. If a business has a competitor, they will strive to get the customers away from the competitor. This may mean their products will improve in quality. Customers want the best quality. It prevents businesses from sitting on their laurels. Competition is great when you're winning. When you're at the top of your game, you feel on cloud nine. But it's a different story if you're losing. You feel miserable. Sometimes your self-esteem perishes. Many have had faith in a social Darwinist view. They believe the people that are wealthy are wealthy because they're stronger, better people. The people that are poor are lesser people. This is devastating when we consider there's many reasons people would be poor. Certainly their environmental factors come into play. Competition pervades all of our life, all the way from the way we work to the way we play. One would be hard-pressed to find a perennially popular board game that is not competitive. The quintessential capitalist board game is a game that has sold lots, the most popular board game in the history of our nation, Monopoly. About the only perennially popular board game that is not competitive is a jigsaw puzzle. Competition is one deal when it's in leisure, but when it's for survival itself, that means some people will not be able to survive. This is very sad because a true mark of a civilized society is a society that allows people to survive to guarantee this. When people's survival is guaranteed, their energies can be devoted towards other areas. Cap capitalist competition is very divisive. It pits one element of society against each other. This prevents us from ultimately being the most productive. If two people, two elements work together, they can create so much more. What benefits the whole will benefit the each individual part. There is a better way than having constant competition in society. A prominent feature of our advanced capitalist system is greed. Greed is a big problem because it is often an urge one cannot satisfy. It is a compulsive drive that prevents people from being their best. It puts blinders on people. It makes people act irrationally. Greed encourages people to have more than they need. It's a waste of their energies. Instead of using their energies creativity, they're using their energies for the accumulation of money, goods. There is a better way than endless greed. In capitalism, profits are a central drive. Unfortunately, many times profits are so exalted that what is truly important is forgotten. We see this the way industry treats its workers, treats the environment. Human health, human life is often secondary. Sometimes it's not even considered at all. The reason this is, is because of the way the marketplace is set up. It is set up to be profitable. Many say corporations have no consciousness. They say this because 
corporations are not people. They don't have a heart and a soul. They only have the logic which they're founded on, which is a legal entity. It's our government that makes corporations what they are. Without the charter, they cannot be the corporations. Ambrose Bierce made the very pithy statement, corporations are an ingenious device to assure individual profit without individual liability. This is why when there's wrongdoing in a corporation, it's difficult to pin it down to people. The responsibility is diffused through the whole corporation. The profit motive taints whatever it gets in touch with. It prevents purity from reigning. Many of us certainly see how profits can make sex degraded. Many of us are offended by the notion of prostitution. We believe love is too great to pay for it. It should be valued for its own sake. Yet, other beautiful, passionate activities of life, we do not view the same way when the profit motive enters the picture. If a painter is painting what they love, if they're paid for it, it degrades it because they're not doing it for its own sake. It often leads to making the painting unfun. In capitalism, everything tends to become a job and a chore when the profit motive enters the picture. Doing activity for its own sake could be considered the epitome of virtue. There is a better way than endless profits. In capitalism, there is this trend for, for an equitable distribution of wealth. We have a great gap between the rich and the poor today. On one end of the spectrum, people have billions and billions of dollars, more money than they could possibly ever use. On the other end of the spectrum, we have people who don't have enough money to buy a crust of bread. Dave Obey recently said, why is everyone so upbeat? Maybe we shouldn't be, considering how bad it is. The gap between the rich and the poor is as great as it has ever been. Dave Obey saying this is a powerful statement. At least today we have a sizable middle class. If the gap is greater than it's ever been, it is a sad reflection of the current time. In many ways, the situation today resembles that of 100 years ago. 100 years ago, corporations were gaining enormous power. Citizens felt helpless everywhere they went. Corporations were controlling them. Today, the circumstance is the same. This caused the government in the late 1800s, early 19th century to crack down, to pass antitrust legislation. 1890s Sherman Antitrust Regulation was passed. In the 1990s, the same dynamic occurred. Corporations were gaining so much power, they're way more powerful than many government bodies. Microsoft was the epitome example. It got so bad that our government felt compelled to regulate Microsoft. A very sad aspect of the inequitable distribution of wealth Many people are working hard, yet they're not being compensated well for their work. Certainly those who are creative, those who have improved our society, should earn more than others. Bill Gates has helped us out enormously. He deserves more than most people. But it should be based in reality. There's a point when the compensation becomes absurd. Sure, we can give him 100000 a year, 500000 a year, but when we give him billions and billions a year, that's a sad statement. It's also important to put what he does, what other capitalists do, in perspective. There's people like Michael Jordan and Oprah Winfrey who get millions of dollars every year. 
if we truly valued what was helpful to society, why would these people get more than teachers? Why would these people get more than social workers? Especially more than 100 social workers combined, than 1,000 social workers combined. There is a better way than an equitable distribution of wealth. In capitalism, there is this force that seeks to commodify everything. This is from the low end of the evolutionary scale all the way up. At the low end of the scale, we devalue the earth. The earth is broken down into nothing more than raw products for industry. Instead of us looking at the earth as a holistic entity, we see it as only raw goods to be exploited at will that have no end. This violates the integrity of the, of the earth. We have to remember that we belong to the earth instead of the earth belonging to us. As we move up the scale, it becomes even more vulgar. Animals are treated as merely tools for production. This is especially prevalent as capitalism advances. We have seen in the last 50 years mighty huge factory farms. These factory farms forget that animals have feelings. They can feel pain. They have awareness. It treats animals as nothing more than steel. As technology gets more advanced, it becomes more absurd. Animals are bred so they have no legs because that would take away from profit. Factory farm is very unnatural for the animals because they don't have enough space. Their needs are not being met. As we continue to go up the scale, the commodification of humans is the sickest of all. Humans are considered human resources at businesses. No longer do we have personnel departments, especially negatively affected by this commodification are women. Women are treated as nothing more than objects that can earn money for the corporation. This has caused a host of problems with women, self-esteem issues. It has caused women to pursue unrealistic expectations. There's nothing wrong with valuing beauty, but beauty should not be all that's valued. It should be considered a part of a full being instead of detached as just a part. There is a better way than the commodification of everything. There is a strange occurrence. In capitalism, it seems as if the worst products tend to sell the best. The products that destroy our health always tend to sell well. Cigarettes, despite our great knowledge about what they do, they continue to sell well. Alcohol is another example. It is baffling to ponder how well alcohol does in our society. In Stevens Point, we have 60 bars. Add to that the liquor stores, the restaurants that serve alcohol, the convenience stores that serve alcohol. How can all these businesses serving alcohol survive? Food itself is also used negatively to make profit. We have pseudo food with the fast food outlets in the grocery stores, the snack foods, that continue to sell well. Great article in a magazine mentioned fruit and vegetable companies often don't bother advertising because they don't make enough profit to make it worth their while. Intellectually, 
Everyone loves Beavis and Butthead. Everyone loves MTV. Everyone loves Howard Stern. Try to get a classical book of literature, classical book of philosophy. That doesn't sell very well. There is a better way than always having the worst sell the best. Many of us are naturally, naturally appalled to theft and slavery. We believe in our society that it's wrong to steal from the store. We believe that our morals are set, they're fixed. But if we look at morals in a different way, we start to see the picture differently. We start to realize morals in our society may be more arbitrary. They may be set up to protect certain people's interests. Maybe what the capitalists are doing is theft, is slavery. Surely, most everyone in our society believes what the South in the Civil War did was wrong. They enslaved people. The South had an interesting piece of propaganda they put out. They had one scene of slaves dancing, singing, having a joyous life. They contrasted that to the North, where workers reluctantly were drones going to work. Obviously, their picture of the South was distorted, but they did have a good point about the North. Many people assumed the North was free, but the North may have not been free after all. We certainly believe if someone gets zero dollars for their work, it's slavery. But what if we pay them one penny a year? Technically, they may not be a slave, but for all intents and purposes, they are. Maybe slavery is not apparently blunt. Maybe slavery is a sliding scale. Maybe it's a continuum. Marx believed in capitalism. There was two groups, the bosses and the workers. They were conflict over the wages. The boss wanted to squeeze as much out of the worker as possible. The worker wanted to get maximum compensation for their work. In capitalism, the worker does not get all the wealth they produce. The boss has to get some of the wealth. This means the worker is not getting everything they can. This can be considered tantamount to theft. The boss is profiting off the worker's work, stealing from the worker's productivity. Certainly it would seem more fair if people could be compensated for the work that they do. There is a better way than profiting off the labor of others. Capitalism has often led to imperialism. Capitalism often gets so big, the capitalists at home have saturated all of the markets. They've saturated their resource supply. They must go somewhere else in order fill their needs. Once upon a time, imperialism was based on political lines. Today, imperialism is based on economic lines. Some may argue it's just as powerful as it was once upon a time. Today, boundaries are broken down in a major way. Some ways this is good. Some ways it's bad because it allows the corporations to come in and establish a control over the culture. This causes people to become subjects of the corporations. Just as corporations in this country exploit the middle class, for us to have our standard, people across the world 
have to be exploited even more. The very exploitative system. The lower down the scale you go, the more exploited you are. This is very demeaning to the subjugated people because everyone wants their own autonomy. There is a better way than imperialism. Capitalism tends to promote selfish greed. The Bible considered greed to be one of the seven deadly sins. Of all the sins, it was one of the most deadly. Certainly greed is not a mo noble motivation. Often prevents us from being our best. What about love? What about compassion? What about greater integrity? Capitalism with its money crazed notion prevents us from actualizing ourselves. There's a better way than this dangerous greed. In capitalism, there is naturally much materialism. Many times we're taught our well-being, our worth, as a person is based on how much we own. Many of us are trying to live up to what our neighbors have. Many of us are even taught the key to happiness is acquiring more and more goods. Is this any surprise why people are so empty? There's people in India who don't have one one thousandth of what most of us have, but they're happy because they're concentrating on more essential values. They're concentrating on what is truly important. It may sound simple to say money can't buy happiness, but many of us don't act as if we believe in this. Surely health is more important than wealth. The great saying is health is wealth. How can one enjoy life? They're on a sick bed. They die when they're 50. Certainly, having a million dollars in the world does not mean much if you're not healthy. A great story told by Pastor David Myers of Last Trumpet Ministries in Beaver Dam was about John Rockefeller. He was sick in his latter years. He had a stomach problem which made it difficult to eat a lot. He was sitting in a restaurant, looking outside, trying to get his dinner down. There was a construction worker who obviously did not make one-tenth, one-one-hundredth of what John Rockefeller made. This construction worker wolfed down his sandwich. John Rockefeller looked at him with envy. Many of us would wonder why someone like that would envy anybody. But when we consider that there's more important than just money, we can see how one could do that. John Rockefeller said, I would give up all my wealth if I could have an appetite like that. The extent to which he really mean, meant that could be questioned. It's also important to realize Sometimes, even money spent for doctors cannot give you health. Because health depends on what we do in our daily lives. It's deeper than just putting dollar bills in front of a doctor's face. There is a better way than endless materialism. In capitalism, there is a dog-eat-dog -dog mentality. We are often taught to step on someone else's back in order to advance. This is not very kind. Why can't we have a system that as one person rises, everyone else rises too? The most liberating type of success is pulling someone else up with you, making the whole world improve because you are rising, instead of kicking someone down so you rise. There is a better way than 
God, eat dog mentality of capitalism. Unfortunately, capitalists have got a grip on our nation. Our foreign policy is orientated towards their best interests. Laws are made to benefit them rather than everyone else. Why did we go to fight Iraq in the 90s? It certainly wasn't what George Bush Sr. was saying. That was lofty nonsense. There was plenty of other examples in the world that we could have intervened due to human rights violations, due to whatever we claim Iraq was doing. The reason that we intervened there was because we had financial oil interests. Fortunately, capitalists and government today are least separate entities, but the line is blurry sometimes. Many rich people bribe the politicians to pass the laws they want. Sometimes advanced capitalism can resemble communism in both powers concentrated. Just on the surface, they're different. They may indeed be different heads of the same dragon. There is a better way than having capitalists run our nation without considering the interests of everyone else. Capitalism, when it mixes with democracy, can cause tremendous corruption. Many politicians are in the business not to make our lives better first and foremost, but to get elected. Many of them don't have the greatest morals. It's a universal sentiment to question the morals of politicians. The system that we have is very logical. Why would a politician want to do the morally right act if it wouldn't get them elected? One of the greatest ways to get elected in this country, due to the legislation we have, is by being financed. Having lots of money to create big commercials to reach a huge audience. People without any money have a difficult time even getting their foot in the door. We certainly need campaign finance reform, or else the rich politicians will continue winning. What's the difference between Clinton, George W. Bush? Not much at all. They're both eat high on the hog. When will we have a politician that is not endlessly wealthy? There is a better way than the corruption of capitalism getting involved in our political system. Capitalism encourages us to consume, consume, consume. This has many negative ramifications. Certainly, the earth is devastated by this. It is an environmental problem when all of us are constantly consuming, especially in this country. We consume way more resources than most people all over the world. Of course, the earth cannot last forever. It is limited. Someday, it may not have anything left for us. When that occurs, we will be in a very dangerous situation. It is often virtuous to live simply. Many people devote too much time and effort into work to get some material goods. Certainly, if we devoted less time to work, we could do what we really want to do. Talking to this one person, there was a career speaker who said most money college students get from their jobs is to buy material goods, like a stereo. 
when we constantly want more and more, that means we have to work more and more. It means we're not free. It means we're, we're tied down. It's not black and white. There's certainly a continuum. The less we work, the more free we are. This game has been played with every employee of every business. They want to work as little as possible. It's very rare employees who will put in extra when they're not being compensated. Why should we? Why should we be working for someone else's gain? We could be working for our own gain, whether this be intellectual, artistic, physical. The less time we have for working, the more time we have. Take advantage of life. Life is too short to work nonstop. Certainly the people that work 60 hours a week are to be admired for their dedication. But this is a special opportunity we have. We only go through this once. The less we work, the more free we are. There is a better way than this endless consumerism. It is ironic corporations, being as rich as they are, sometimes are subsidized by the government. Michael Moore put it in perspective really well. He was talking about how sad it is when people condemn those on welfare for wasting tax dollars. He said corporations get five times more welfare money from the government than individuals on welfare. These rich corporations, we are subsidizing. Something is seriously wrong. It's especially absurd in some cases. On one hand, our government pays tobacco companies to grow their tobacco. Then, when the tobacco kills people, the government sues the tobacco company. This is ludicrous. We could save ourselves a whole lot of trouble and expense if we never subsidized these industries at all. We often see great bumper stickers which say, take the corporations off welfare. Certainly, it may be sad to have poor people on welfare if welfare is not empowering them as the conservatives say it isn't. But it's ludicrous to have rich people on welfare. There is a better way than subsidizing corporations. As rotten as advanced capitalism can get, the way our nation is set up, there can be improvements. The system cannot last forever. History shows us even the most powerful empires fall. Nazi Germany fell. The Roman Empire fell. Capitalism can end too when we have a system that is geared for our best interests and can, that can allow us, enable us to maximize our full potential. It will be glorious. There is a better way than hyper-capitalism there is a better way. Good evening.